Good morning. I'd like to use as a sermonic theme this morning, turn down the noise. Turn down the noise. On November 23rd, 2012, the day after Thanksgiving, Tommy, Leland, Tevin, and Jordan hung out together. They played basketball. They went over one of the guys' homes to change. They went to the mall, and Jordan visited with his girlfriend, who worked in one of the stores at the mall. They rode up around in their car, playing rap music. As the day was winding down, they decided to stop by the Gate Petroleum gas station in Jackson, Florida, for gum and cigarettes. Their music was pretty loud. One guy pulled up and parked further away from the noise, but another guy pulled in with his fiance and pulled up to get wine. He and his fiance had just attended his son's wedding reception party. They had a puppy back at the hotel and they wanted to get back to attend to the puppy. That guy commented to the kids before turning to his fiance and saying, I hate that thug music. Can you please turn your music down? Turn down, turn down the noise. Tevin, one of the kids in the car, turned the music down, but Jordan, Jordan wasn't having it. He argued, why do we have to turn our music down using some colorful words? The driver hears the argument escalating. The driver is like, are you, are you talking about me? And Jordan responds, yeah, I'm talking about you. Loud music, gunshots. A 17-year-old Jordan is unalive. Loud music has become popular. Some even buy additional speakers to put in their cars and trunks to get more sound out of their car. Sometimes when you're at the car dealership, they'll try to sell you on the additional quality and loudness of the speakers. Loud music provides quite an immersive experience, drowning out all other sounds. Jordan must have had some notion as he wanted the music turned back up. Sometimes when music is loud, you can feel the bass in your body. For some, this kind of cessation is preferable. With loud music, we can get an increased sense of enjoyment. But with louder music, we can also, we can also get distracted. With louder music, one can harm the cells, which once damaged, malfunction and are irreplaceable. At a certain noise level, doctors will tell you, with continual exposure, we face the loss of hearing. At a concert, in a car, at a festival, on a subway, close to a construction site, in close proximity to an ambulance, fireworks, cops, lawnmowers, all of these sounds threaten our hearing, while loud noise can draw you into the moment and presence of what is happening, sometimes it can draw out everything else. Sometimes noise can be a distraction. This is where we enter the biblical text today. All this lady wanted was to get her daughter well. She's on a mission. This mother is persistent. She knows why she is there, and that her goal is to get healing for her daughter. And she thinks Jesus might, just might be able to help her from the rumors that she's heard. She is nothing less than short of desperation and need. Desperation can drive you to do some crazy stuff. Desperation can sit on your psyche when you feel like you're running out of options. Do any of you remember that movie, John Q? His son needed a transplant, a heart transplant. They did not have the appropriate insurance. This dad has a sick child. Between doctors and insurance, he can't get the help he needs for his child. His son is really, really sick, and his son is going to die. And John Q, John Q is on a quest now to save his child. He goes down several roads, but they all end up being dead ends. 
With nothing left to do in desperation, he takes the hospital ER hostage. At one point, Denzel, the main character, says in only a way that Denzel can say, I will do whatever I got to do for my son to live. And you know he's desperate. He's desperate enough. He's crazy enough. The only thing keeping him sane is his desire for his son's life. The movie tells this story of this father who is desperate enough that he'll go through any lengths to keep his child alive. This mom in the biblical text today was desperate. She had a pressing need. She had contemplated before she ever made her way to Jesus. Once there, she bows down before him and begs on behalf of her daughter. I got nothing to lose here and everything to gain. My daughter is sick, and I think, Jesus, you can, you can help us. But there is a loud noise, a very loud noise. It is Jesus' response. Jesus responds to her words, not her faith. Loud noise, according to the message translation, Jesus says, stand in line and take your turn. The children get fed first. If there's any left over, the dogs get it. Where I come from, these words would have had someone saying, who you calling a dog, with a few words to follow. The volume is loud, the, the noise is loud, it's offensive, it's hurtful, it's distracting. Loud noises can get us off track. They can distract us, they can cause us to lose focus of what's really important. There is no getting around the harsh refusal in Jesus' words in this text today. This could have gone so many ways. She could have turned and left. She could have responded out of pain. She could have given up. She could have felt offended by the implications that she was not worthy enough, that her daughter was not worthy enough, that somehow you would liken them to dogs and crumbs. Loud music will make you do that and more. But this mom was able to turn down the noise this mom was able to turn down the noise enough to remember why she came in the first place, to remember her purpose, to remember what her objective was. She responds in full parent mode, sir, even the little dogs under the table eat the children's cum. crumbs. Feminist scholar Elaine Wainwright remarks, the woman's great faith makes possible a life free of oppressive restrictions for herself and for her daughter. The subversive power of this story goes far beyond the traditional boundary breaking. Even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. She will not be denied. This time Jesus responds not only to her words, but he responds to her face, to her faith. And Jesus gets a second chance. There is so much noise in our country that I believe we are getting distracted. You can see it with our elections, talking about stuff that does not matter. You can see it in our elections on both sides, senseless talk about things that don't matter. September 10th, this Tuesday, perhaps we will have a chance to hear the candidates speak on real issues, but right now there's a lot of loud noise. We continue to spoo forth hate on immigrants in our country, demonizing them, loud noise. We need to turn down the noise. False narrative and accusations, we need to be able to turn down the noise. Families not speaking to one another, turn down the noise. A 14-year-old this week kills four people and we learn he comes from a dysfunctional family. How, low I, how loud, I have to wonder, was the noise in his life when he pulled that trigger? An ex-boyfriend douses his ex-girlfriend with gas and lights her on fire. Days later, after she returns home from the Olympics, how much noise was pumping in his head? 
We got to turn down the noise. It's so loud and distracting. The noise is killing us. This noise can make it difficult to hear a word from the Lord. This noise is loud, pulsating through our bodies. One of the things that I don't miss about living on 55th Street is when a car with loud music would drive by, the whole house would vibrate. I could only imagine if the house was vibrating, if I felt like I wasn't vibrating, what did it feel like in the car? Where they shared this loud music with the whole community. There is loud music all around, and sometimes it's external, and sometimes it's internal. Old maps that lead to dead-end roads, streets that are aren't taking us anywhere, critical thoughts that set us back, doubts that leave us unable to move, a sense of unworthiness that causes us to second guess ourselves, loud noise, fear and insecurities beating like hell on the window of our heart. The noise can be a distraction from what matters. Sometimes we gotta reach out for the knob and turn down, turn down the noise. The noise can threaten to undo us. I remember as a teenager, and I'm going to be dating myself, for one of my birthdays, I got a Walkman. Does, did, did any, but does anybody remember the days of the Walkman? Oh my goodness, it was brand new. It was so beautiful in the package, and it was shiny, and it was silver. And I remember when I got it, I put a cassette in it, and I turned up the noise and I put the headphones on my ear and I loved this beautiful contraption and I was in my own world until one day I opened my eyes and I can remember my mom was standing over me and there were fumes coming out of her nostril. I was scared. I later learned she had been calling me from downstairs and calling me. She had called me several times to no avail. I was on the second floor, and ordinarily, I would have heard her. I did think she was overreacting, but back in the day when I was growing up, those were thoughts that you kept to yourself. She had wanted me to do something, but I was unable to respond because of the noise. Sometimes all that noise prevents us from doing what we need to do. We can hear all right, but at the same time, we can't hear. We can actively turn down the noise when needed to help us discern God's voice. God, what do you want me to do? It is not the loud noise that matters, but what we do with it. Two boys grow up in the same house. One becomes a professor, and one goes to jail. Same parents, same community, same school. Two people given the same news. One curses God. The other says, I will praise the Lord at all time. God's praise will continually be on my, my lips. Two people are given lemons. One throws them away and another adds sugar and drinks. This mother was given a terrible blow by none other than Jesus. The music is loud. The music is loud. The music is so loud. But she turns down the volume long enough to remember why she was standing there in the first place. My daughter needs healing. My nation needs healing. My community needs healing. I, dear Lord, need healing. Even with all you have on your plate, Jesus, can you spare just a little for her? Amen.